Welcome to Pathways Through the Prairie. I am your host, State Librarian Mary Susie. We will interview North Dakota librarians and library staff, state government leaders and employees, and interesting North Dakotans. Join us as we meander down the pathways through the prairie. I am joined today by Divide County Public Library Director and School Librarian Tracy Lund. I've known Tracy for close to 10 years, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. So Tracy, thank you so much for joining me. You bet, I'm excited to do this. So you are the public library director and the school librarian. So I'm I'm looking forward to delving into what that world is like being in both roles. Busy. I bet, and you were busy before that, so. Yes, uh, um, it's, been, it's been challenging, but so amazing. I I wouldn't change it. That's awesome. I'm glad it's working so well. Yeah. So Tracy, the State Library's mission is providing pathways to innovation and information for North Dakota's library, state government, and North Dakota residents. So tell me, what was your pathway into the library world? Well, I think my pathway is probably quite different than many librarians. I actually do not have a librarian degree. I don't have a media studies degree. I actually have a business degree from the University of North Dakota. Um, so mine, when I got here, when my husband and I thought about moving, um, he's from here, there were a few jobs available and one was to be the director of the library. And there was a few people that persuaded me, hey, you should try it. And I'm like, there's no way. I can be a librarian. Are you kidding me? They're quiet. They hush people. You know, that is not me. And so, well, 15 years later, here I am. And I didn't know it, obviously, at the time, but it is literally my dream job. I will maybe one day, they will probably have to force me to retire. I, I just truly love it. The impact that you can make on people. Um, through reading or even just libraries are becoming so much more than books. You know, we say that all the time. Libraries are more than books. Um, and, and we truly are the way we help people with all different things um, in life from computer work to, you know, just having newspapers here, the conversations. It's amazing. And then for me, too, now diving into the school side of things, it, it's it's incredible. Um, I will say that I don't feel like I would have got here the way I did um, without the help of the State Library and the guidance of the State Library. And then also very early on, I jumped in to become the president of the North Dakota Library Association. And those things really transformed me and transformed the way I thought of libraries and how to benefit my library and what I could do here. Um, you know, in Divide County here, we're tiny, we're small. Uh, I am at the top. I am at the top of the chain. I am not going any farther. I'm not coming after your job, Mary. <laughs> I, I do not want that. <laughs> um, so to find things like being a part of, um, you know, the NDLA and things like that and getting involved really helped me focus and understand libraries in such a different way. So having those pathways too is so incredible and just the opportunities that the library gives um, through grants and things like that, it, it's incredible. And again, I wouldn't be where I am now or probably have the passion I have without it. Well, that's, that's really kind. And I'm glad to know that we are meeting our mission of helping the library community. And, you know, your path, it isn't that different than a lot of our North Dakota library directors, oh. especially in our small and rural libraries. We actually have, uh, we don't have a lot of librarians in the public library world in North Dakota that have their master's degree in library science. There are some at our larger libraries. We have some, um, some of our larger libraries have someone who has a master's degree that might be running adult services or their children's programming or something like that. The academic libraries have a lot more you know, with masters, but you're not as unusual as you may think you are. But I will say, Tracy, I'm glad to know you're not gunning for my job because 
personality wise, I cannot <laughs> compete with you. You are so exuberant and passionate. Oh. Um, but I do. I love that you said you can't be a librarian because it's they they're introverts and they shush people. And that is the stereotype. And there are a lot of introverts in the library world. Um, I am not one of those either. As you know, I've actually been shushed by patrons when I was working in the public library. I actually had a patron shush me. They were trying to take a proctor test at our library and they were like, um, could you all quiet down at the desk because you're disturbing my test taking. <laughs> so libraries really are not what they once were. We are about so much more than books. And I know um, your library has really jumped into some different avenues to provide service. So what are the different things that you're doing that people might be surprised to learn, especially in a small library? Well, I think the the biggest thing is how much we can provide. Um, you know, we're the the only place in town that has computers. We're the only place um, where you could come to print anything off of. So, I mean, I'm helping with fishing licenses to helping you with social work stuff. You know, it really is all over the place. Um, I think people are fearful sometimes, I don't want to use the word fearful, are um, hesitant. Think that they're, yeah, hesitant. Like, oh, I don't want to take the services away from you. Um, like using mango languages and stuff like that. Like, oh no, that's for other people. No, that's for you too. Um, and so people have been really excited to find out some of those things that we can provide or get for them. Um, I still have so many patrons that think, though, that it's so cool that we can get books from other libraries. So really, we're a very small town here. doesn't take a lot to excite us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we're in the midst of a renovation right now. And I'm excited for that in obviously the way that it's going to transform our library. But I'm excited for our community as well to show them that, hey, we're here to stay. Like we're putting in the work, the money, the effort to show you that this is the community place. This is for everybody. Um, we have our school board meetings in here. We have, you know, our story times, which are crazy. We just had an article in the paper and I was quoted by saying, if you're looking for a quiet place on Wednesdays, the library is not the place to be. <laughs> um, and I pride myself on that actually too. Um, we have a lot of fun. Uh, this summer here we'll have our summer reading um summer reading story time uh extravaganza will be happening uh roughly on a wednesday we run in with about 100 kids that come through the door we're right around 100 to 130 depending on the day um so we provide just a whole bunch of gamut of services that people don't I don't feel like they understand that we can give them. Um, we get the random phone calls for all sorts of things. And when they say, oh, you can help me with that. I'm like, yeah. Uh, we also have digitized all of our past um, journals, which are, are the name of our newspaper in town. Um, and that has been huge. People have just really loved that. Uh, we had permission to put the yearbooks online. Um, and a couple other history books that could be online. So having those types of things too has been really wonderful. Um, again, showing the community that we're listening to you and uh, we're, we're doing what we can for you. Our biggest project that we just did, we got a grant from the state li or from the North Dakota Coordinating Council and uh, we did local history videos. And those were incredible. It was just, um, we picked a wide variety of people from across Divide County. And we had a local videographer. She's actually quite new to the, the business, but she's amazing. And it was so great. And she did all the questions and they turned out just fabulous. And I, I think that's probably the best thing um, my number one thing that I have done for the library is is that. And if I can continue, my goal is to continue a couple um, here and there as we can, just because the history is so important. And a lot of people aren't aren't doing those large history books anymore to keep that. So how do we retain that? Um, so by doing this project, it was so, oh, it was my favorite. 
it was my favorite so far. Oh, that sounds that sounds like such a wonderful, wonderful project. So, Tracy, for people who may not be familiar with your library, uh, they're listening to this podcast. Tell us a little bit about Divide County. How many people do you serve? How many are on your staff? <laughs> so how many exciting students? news. Uh, it used to be me, and then I had two part-time employees, um, and they would kind of come and go through the week. But we now have myself and one full-time employee. Uh, we just got that in June of last year. She went full-time. And so super exciting that there is two of us now to provide services, and it's been really, really nice. Um, and you don't hear a lot of adding employees like that in our world, there's a lot more taking away. So I feel very privileged that we were able to do that. Um, Our library is kind of cool and different. I know there's a few around the state, but not many of us. Our county library is attached to our school library. So we have a door that funnels to the elementary hallway. Uh, Kids come into the public library per se and we have our school classes and everything in here in the library and the public is also welcome to come during those times as well we have it pretty good and sectioned off and quite honestly the kids know their section adults know their section it really really truly works um i love it as we can pool our resources, our time. It allows us to have better relationships with the kids too, to foster all of that in the beginning growth of of their school years and their reading, just to develop that all through the years um, is really, really cool. I would hate to see, as much as I dream about, you know, a library with a slide, like Grand Forks, uh, and a yogurt machine, and a two stories. Um, I would hate to see us get away from being attached to the school. I just think for our area, um, we're roughly we serve around. I think it's around twenty one hundred, twenty twenty two hundred um, patrons in our area. We're kind of, we're very kind. We do spread out. There is the library now um, in Tioga, which has been very nice. But we used to kind of even let other areas come in our direction because we're so in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) We are are, are truly on our own little island out here. So um, those that are close, we even have had a few Montana patrons over the years that we have allowed to use our library. Um, again, I, I just feel like I'm not going to turn you away if you're going to, if you want to read or if if I can help you, that's, that's not what we're about. So, um, we've done that. I always joke that, um, in my backyard, I can be in two countries and two States in one. We're so close to Montana and so close to Canada, um, that we have actually had a couple of Canadian patrons too, um, that have used our library because they're in small areas and it just works and so um yeah so that's did i answer your question you did yes okay yes you did yes (laughs) and then continue to ramble (laughs) so um and really you know i have long said libraries are the heart of their community. Libraries should strive to be the center of the community, the place to go for information, the place to go for personal enrichment. We're a trusted source in the community and everything you're saying really drives that point home, especially when you say you serve people from other states and other countries. That's, libraries really do serve everyone and we're kind of the last entity that will serve anyone that walks through our doors. And I love that about being a librarian. I agree. And I think your library is um, one of the combined school public libraries that I, it's probably the one that I've seen in my years as a librarian that have, has worked the best in terms of really utilizing and harnessing and sharing resources. There used to be a separate school librarian. So how did you come to be the public library director and the school librarian? Well, <laughs> um. 
if you know me, um, I really like things done my way. <laughs> It's so, um, we had the school librarian, she was great. She was wonderful, but she was going to switch kind of positions and going part-time. Um, and so there was this opening and well, I just kind of said, uh, because there is a teacher shortage, again, I don't have a teaching degree. Uh, I went to our superintendent. I was like, so I can't do the high school. We actually have a a high school that's separate and they have a, a library as well. So she was splitting her time between uh, the high school in the morning and then down here in the afternoons. And I just said, here's the deal. I, I don't want just anybody in the library because they were talking about, you know, again, teacher shortages, just maybe putting a pair in here. Uh, maybe the kids would just, you know, come and get books, but no library classes. I did not think that was a good idea. Um, and so I was on a board here in town that took quite a bit of my time. So I said, here's the deal. I will take it over. I can only do the elementary, though I can't. There's no way I can do both the high school and here. I will do the elementary. I will do the classes. I will take care of everything just down here. And um if I do that, I will, I, my plan is to resign from this board so that I can focus more on that. And so they hemmed and hawed a little bit and they were like, all right, sounds good. And so that's pretty much it. But I was just so worried about like, just somebody not coming in and loving our library the way I love our library. And so, uh, yeah, here I am. This is year two. Uh, I hear they're going to, give me a contract for next year too <laughs> so that's good um but again i i almost can't imagine the days when i didn't do both now um because it's just become such a part of the day i i love it because it lets me really um teach library skills and teach those things that i want the kids to know and understand um but we also have a really great time right now in classes. In fact, we're doing digital citizenship. So a little bit different than just library, but also something that's super important. So we talk about all digital citizen things. Um, and it's been really, it's been fun to see that side of the library world too. There's a lot that comes with that. I joke that I learn something new times 10 every day. Uh, and that is, I'm going to have to up the times 10 because, I mean, especially now the, the school side of things, holy smokes, there's so much to learn um, and to do. So we're just, you know, going with the flow of everything. Mm -hmm. Lots of sticky notes. <laughs> Keep well, me on task. My high school humanities teacher, Mrs. Holloway, would, would applaud you. I remember Mrs. Holloway telling us, um, every night before you go to bed, before you put your head on that pillow, you should learn one new thing that day. So you can sleep for the next 10 years comfortably because <laughs> you're, you're meeting Miss Holloway's rule at, at a lot it. of levels, right? <laughs> yeah. So Tracy, the, a public library and a school library have different missions. The mission of the public library is to serve the whole community, as you have so beautifully demonstrated. The mission of the school library is to support the curriculum and meet the needs of the kids' educational needs. Public library, we meet educational and we do learning in so many ways, but we're also about that personal enrichment piece. Do you ever find that being the librarian at both, do those missions complement each other in your library or do they ever, is there ever conflict between the two missions? Um, no. It complements, I feel, so perfectly that it, it goes it is it's the peanut butter and jelly um and i guess i can say that because i have a library board and a school board that come together to help me with that to meet those missions truly uh, if i didn't have that i can see where this could be troublesome but i i am so lucky i don't have that and then i have the third piece of the community that really rallies around the missions of those two but like on a given day yeah i have i have my set standards that i have to teach 
I follow those from DPI uh, in my curriculum. But then at the end of the day, when that student comes in and we can just still chat about books and what they're reading and we find them a good book, um, or, or we just talk about their day, they just stop in. I have a little girl that comes down and hugs me every day before she leaves. It's, it's the best thing ever. You know, if I can just give her a hug as whatever entity I am at the time, I, I've won for the day. If I have reached to one person, one student, um, you know, and then we have a group of kids that come after school too. They play on the computers, but they do look around at books, but we have conversations um, and, and we're really kind of a safe spot after school. Uh -huh. And that's kind of, we're doing a renovation right now yeah. that I'm hopefully making a better area for um, that too. And so it, it really, again, it complements each other so well because it fosters the relationship mm -hmm. and it does it at such an early age. Um, and so then when, you know, I'm out in the community and little Janie says to her mom, that's my librarian. And, you know, Janie's mom's used to that very strict librarian that says shh all the time. Um, you know, and I come up and I'm like, oh, you know, it's a real pleasure to have Janie in school and I really enjoy her. And the mom was staring at me like, what is going on? You know, it's, it's so amazing. So then they have, I get to have that conversation and then the child has that conversation. And now we've reached a whole nother area uh, of patrons, I feel. So it's, that's, it's really great. That's so awesome. I remember, it's so funny when they see us like out of the library. I can remember when I was a public library director at a small library, small by Illinois standards. Not so small by North Dakota standards, <laughs> but we served a community of about 9,200, but it was a rural community on the edge of the suburbs in, in Illinois. And I still remember I was at the grocery store one day, like in the middle of the week, in the middle of the afternoon, I was at the grocery store and I saw one of our story time kids there and she like tugs on her mom's shirt and her mom leans over and her mom starts laughing and she says, you know, so-and-so wants to know if, if you're here, who's running the library? Is Miss Nikita at work? <laughs> Miss Nikita's got it, you know, and it's so, they just, they, they, so like they're surprised just a lot. And I would imagine with you being in the role of both teacher and librarian that like that ups the ante when they see you oh, out totally. of your world, because they're always surprised when they see a teacher out in the wild and a librarian in the wild and you're, and you're both. And then you're so exuberant on top of it. Well, and I just think like, we do some crazy things um, in the school side of things. And if the kids can see that again, uh, they, they're they learning that I'm here for them at, again, an early age. I, I can't stress how great that is um, to have that so early in life for them to follow through, to just do know. Do you find that you're able to build literacy skills without the kids even realizing that's what you're doing? Oh, for sure. And um, we do, AR is not my favorite program. That's a whole other discussion. And, but and AR is? It's accelerated reader. So the kids take, they read a book, they take a test on it, they get points. Um, but we do quite a few things for all level of readers. It's important for me um, to have, or even our lowest level reader, be a champion when it comes to reading to our highest level. You deserve it too. I mean, I want to champion you as well. So we do classroom AR goals. We do individual AR goals. Um, and we also do just kind of an overall AR goal. Um, but so quarterly, we do AR goals to help with those literacy things in a classroom setting. So you get the best of the AR in your students and then the lowest level, it really makes those lower levels try so hard on those tests. And when they can get it and they come in here and that's the first thing, hands are raised. Guess what, Mrs. Lund, I got my AR goal. Um, it's incredible. We had a student last week, in fact, tell me that he got his AR goal, his classroom AR goal. And I was so excited. It almost like I had to like, 
take a deep breath because it brought tears to my eyes. I think it's the first time that he's completed it, but they get to slime me this quarter. And they're all very into wanting to slime me. I'm, I'm very scared of the amount of slime we're gonna that I will have <laughs> over my head. But my thought is, if that's what it takes, I'll totally do it. I got no problem doing that. If that can give you some literacy skills to build upon your foundation of education, I'm in. Count me in every day, all day. That's so, great. So and there's great. so many literacies that libraries dive into now that we didn't. We used to be about books and we used to be about reading. We've always and always will be, in my opinion, about reading literacy. But there's so many other literacies. There's financial, there's digital literacy, there's technology literacy. The state library just did a kid on climate literacy working with the Emer Department of Emergency Services that will soon be available for libraries and individuals to check out. And there's a curriculum in there so you could do a climate literacy kit with your kids. Are there other literacies that you dive into? Like you talked about digital citizenship. What are some yes. of the other literacies you're tackling without Again, without the kids knowing, or even your adult patrons knowing, hey, we're building literacy. You know, I think the thing is, is just, and I I do this kind of in the beginning, I'll do the gotcha. Um, just the idea, you know, we always hear that, <laughs> I don't like to read, I don't like to read. Um, okay, that's that's fine. You You don't have to like to read, but you need to understand how to read um and so i'll do these little signs around that i see kids reading and then at the bottom like gotcha you know gotcha to read and so i think there's things like that not necessarily in all different literacies but just in the realm of literacy um, just to teach them that they are reading more and understanding more than they know they are doing on a given day um, right. So I think that's the biggest thing. My biggest teaching thing as far as literacy, though, is the digital uh, citizenship. We do anywhere from four to six weeks on digital citizenship now. And that'll change, too. Um, there's with the legislation of last year, there's some more digital, some media, Internet stuff that's coming down the pipeline um, that we'll do, too. Um, but really, we do just a lot of general literacy when it comes to it. Mm -hmm. So your library is doing so much for your community. You're impacting every person in the community, I guess, whether it's directly or through impacting a member of their family or their neighbor. If someone said... Like, what's the one thing I should know about the Divide County Public Library and the Divide County School Library? What, what's the one thing you would want people to know? Oh, my gosh. Oh. I think that we're here. We're here for them no matter what. Um, you know, if you come to me and you ask, um, gosh, I don't even know, um, how they can get something. I mean, we will figure it out in town. We'll call all over. I've been known to call people. Um, <laughs> we've had people come to town and asked if, you know, John Olson still lives in John Olson's house. Well, I'm not originally from here. So I will call whoever I need to call to figure out if John Olson still lives in his house and what happened to John Olson. Um, so I will do that from anything from that to you want a book, we will call around and get a book to, oh, uh, there's just so many different, I mean, the library is just, I just guess, come to us, come to us for anything that you need. We'll figure it out. We'll help you. There's no so stone many unturned. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's through North Dakota, our collaboration with libraries and other librarians. And like, for me, other directors um, is so huge and vast that Truly, you asked me about, um, you know, hockey tickets to UND. Oh, yeah, I got I got some people. Let me give you some numbers. Um, you know, I just think we are truly here for whatever you need. Just mm -hmm. give us a call. 
And I love that. I did an I did a podcast interview recently with Joe Rector, who's the director at James River Valley Library System in Jamestown. Yeah. And I asked Joe a similar question and his response was, we are here for you. So there's a theme, right? We <laughs> as, as librarians, uh, and I don't care that you don't have the piece of paper that says you're a librarian, you are a librarian. And as Thank librarians, you. we are here to meet your needs, whether it's information, personal enrichment, if you just need a shoulder to cry on, if you need to talk it through with someone, I mean, I, you know, we help people through deal with medical diagnoses. We help people deal with family grief. We help people, we join in their celebrations, whether it's graduation, it's that time of year, right? Graduation yeah. celebrations, but a new puppy and, you know, a new sibling and, you know, just every, every stage of life, we are there to serve our patrons. It's so funny you say that because as we were moving books for our renovation, there was a book that popped out and I went, oh, I I ordered that specifically for a patron. He's now passed. Um, but gosh, those conversations that we had while he was in here. So good. I mean, I don't, I don't think patrons understand how much they touch us either. Mm, absolutely. You know, by just their conversations, just stopping in. Um, you know, I have one lady every once in a while, I get a little worried, you know, I haven't seen her in a while. Um, you know, just give, and I just give her a call. Hey, how's it going? Can I bring you a book? Do you need a book? Are you feeling okay? Um, and I think that's important to know too, you know, we're unlike, in my opinion, we're unlike any other job where the people get to make such an impact on us too mm -hmm. um, and what we do for them. You know, I think of those years of, of COVID. I know, I know we don't want to talk about that real much, but I, I was busier than ever during COVID. Um, it was crazy chaos and what we were doing for our patrons. And it was also in turn, crazy how much I missed them and I miss mm. seeing them um, and then we started kind of doing book delivery and you know dropping them off and I'd wait wait for them to come just so I could wave at them and see their face too and have just that connection with them again um, it's incredible and and they do they come and go um, just like our kids do you know we will lose now this gamut of sixth graders um, and then it's funny I see them and I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened to you? You're, you're so gross. You're so big. <laughs> and then I love it too, because then they'll be like, um, Mrs. Lund, do you still have, you know, that No David book that I checked out 50 times? And I'm like, I sure do. <laughs> you know, um, so I think it's really cool in return, what we can give to our patrons and to our communities, but also what they give back to us. Mm -hmm. And I would I say that's the beauty okay. of being in your unique situation is the sixth graders are moving on, but they can come back and visit you at the public library. Yes. And that's yep. really awesome. Yeah. And I always, I try to stress that like, Hey, you know, you guys are always welcome. Come back and see me. You're going to need a book for your reports. Who are you going to come to? You know? So it's, it's cool. You're like ghostbusters. You're the bookbuster. I actually was just thinking I should make that into a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for joining me today on Pathways to the Prairie. I always enjoy talking with you and today was no different. I've really enjoyed our conversation and learning more about your library and the uniqueness in particular. And I'm so glad it's going well. I remember our conversation when you found out you were going to be doing both and your excited trepidation and i think um it's just worked out so wonderfully for your community and they are so incredibly lucky to have you so thank you so much for joining me today thanks for having me this was wonderful you know i can talk about my library nonstop. <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs>
and log on to Ancestry. Ancestry is a genealogy database with a wealth of information. You can find out so much about your family, about where you came from, but in order to use it, you have to visit a local library. Our license with Ancestry doesn't allow us to give you access at home, so grab your library card and go visit your nearest library and start finding out about your family.